Welcome to the Choose SolidWorks screencast series. My name is Ashin Fense, Sustainability Product Manager at DS SolidWorks. I'd like to talk about sustainable design tools. What is sustainable design? Sustainable design means creating products that are beautiful, functional, and cost-effective while having a reduced impact on the environment. As you can see from this graph showing the number of products certified according to the EPA's Design for Environment program, Sustainable design is an explosive trend, growing even during the recession-slowed year of 2009. Today I'll talk about the two steps necessary for creating greener products. First, using environmental assessment tools to measure the impact of the design. And second, using sustainable design techniques to reduce that impact. Let's start by discussing environmental assessment. Environmental assessment tools range from the simple, back-of-the-envelope variety to the fully ISO certified process called life cycle assessment. Generally, as you go from the more casual to the more formal, you see a resulting increase in the time and cost required to do the assessment. The simplest form of environmental assessment is basic engineering intuition. In my previous work in the sustainability industry, I was involved in an assessment for office product maker Avery Dennison's PVC free binder line. They launched this project because they felt that PVC plastic was detrimental to the environment. They later followed this up with a more rigorous mode of environmental assessment, but their intuition was a great place to start. As a next step, a company might formalize their engineering intuition into a company scorecard, such as this green card developed by Item Group, now called Zymedica, which designs Staples' own branded products. This company scorecard compares a few concept designs qualitatively for things like energy use and packaging. The company might take the next step to adopt conceptual life cycle thinking, which means assessing a couple concept designs by drawing a qualitative comparison of which design uses more best practices through a spider diagram or similar chart. This eco-design strategies wheel or lids wheel shows best practices such as using lower impact materials or optimizing the durability. Next, conceptual life cycle thinking might be formalized into some kind of numerical system, like a spreadsheet. This is called qualitative LCA, or sometimes referred to as a qualitative matrix LCA. This simply means that the company is formally capturing the impacts they care about, such as air impacts, solid waste, or toxicity, seen here on the left, and the life cycle stages they want to assess, such as material, process, and disposal seen here on the top. The numbers or check marks they fill in into the cells may be assigned with careful research, but they're still subjective. This particular qualitative matrix LCA, developed by 3M, asks the user to indicate the relative risk in each cell. Industry scorecards provide a type of qualitative LCA that acts as a usually voluntary standard within that industry. Industry scorecards, like this one from the Outdoor Industry Association, Consider the typical life cycle stages and key environmental impacts, just like a qualitative LCA. They're more robust than company scorecards or qualitative LCAs, though, because they have to consider a range of products within that industry, and so they usually provide a more thorough measure. Finally, a full life cycle assessment uses the same framework of life cycle stages and environmental impacts as a qualitative LCA but uses scientifically-based methods for arriving at the numerical values for each impact. LCAs are performed according to an internationally recognized process given by the ISO 14040 series. An LCA is the most comprehensive way of performing an environmental assessment of a product, but it's also the most demanding. An LCA typically costs around $30,000 and takes three months to perform for a single product. So where does SolidWorks sustainability fit into this array of environmental assessment tools? We believe that the most successful approach is to leverage the power and scientific rigor of LCA data and bring this upstream into the design phase. This way, 
we perform a sort of qualitative LCA, but using real industry average numerical data. This type of assessment is often referred to as a screening level LCA. To enable engineers to perform screening level LCAs within the SolidWorks design environment, we've partnered up with the pioneering LCA firm PE International. We've squeezed PE International's 20 plus years of LCA experience and data into every copy of SolidWorks. Now that you've seen our approach to environmental assessment, let's explore how SolidWorks sustainability can help you actually design or redesign a product to be more sustainable. There are three distinct levels of redesign that we often talk about in sustainable design. Relating to the product system, these levels describe the degree of environmental impact reduction that is possible. For example, when we talk about a factor 2 reduction, that means cutting the impacts by half. Factor 5 would be a fivefold or 80% reduction. The three levels are optimizing an existing system, altering an existing system, and changing to a new system, and are best described with examples. Level 1, optimizing an existing system, is like a car that has been streamlined to improve its gas mileage. This efficient Civic is a good example of a product system that is optimized. Level 2, altering an existing system, is like a car that has been fundamentally altered but still operates within the existing product system. For example, the Prius is a hybrid of two different power sources and has an altered drivetrain, transmission, and braking system, but it still operates within the product infrastructure of roads and gas stations. Level 3, changing to a new system, is a product that breaks the existing system paradigms. The Nissan LEAF is a car in transition to this third level. The LEAF uses some of the existing product infrastructure, like roads and garages, but since it is fueled by electricity, some of this infrastructure must be changed to accommodate this new design. Transportation concepts that are truly level 3 redesigns include so-called personal rapid transit, or PRT systems, such as this driverless taxi system in London, and a startup concept called Skytran. Now let's take a look at a level 1 redesign in SolidWorks, where we optimize an existing system. Here's a simple fire engine toy assembly, which has both plastic and metal parts. First, I'm going to check the environmental parameters, like where this product is assembled, its primary mode of transportation, where it's used, and how much energy it consumes in its use. I'll check the parameters for the individual parts as well, like the material, the manufacturing process, and the manufacturing location for each part. This is all I need to see my sustainability results in carbon, energy, air, and water impacts. Now let's baseline these parameters and try to make some changes against the baseline. What if I assemble this product locally in North America and send it by truck? Looking at our environmental indicators, we're not doing any better. Even if I send it by rail, it's not a clear winner. But this is how sustainability works. You just make changes in your model, and the graphs automatically update. So let's stick with the slow boat from China. Next, I'll look at what we call our environmental hotspots, or the stages of our product's life cycle that contribute most to its impact. These pie charts divide the impact into stages like manufacturing and transportation. I see that the blue and yellow are the biggest pie slices for all four indicators, which tells me that most of the environmental impacts come from the material and the manufacturing. Since material and manufacturing are options we set on each part, let's look at which parts we should really focus on. Assembly visualization is a great tool for that. For example, here I'm using total carbon to rank these parts in order of decreasing carbon intensity. Turning on the coloring, I can see that the wheels and the hub are the worst offenders. I can even look inside to make sure I'm not missing any red parts. Now I have tons of options for redesigning the wheel and the hub. Let's open up the wheel, for example. We'll update the sustainability results and see that the manufacturing is still the killer. I could change the material or lightweight this part to reduce the type or amount that has to be manufactured. I could also change the manufacturing process, but this part would be pretty hard to extrude. A better option would be to explore changing the manufacturing region, 
Now, you may not be able to move your whole manufacturing operation, but if making this one part in a different area is so much better for the environment, maybe you can make this one simple change. Let's manufacture this wheel in India instead. As we go back to our assembly, you'll see that the wheel has dropped in our ranking of parts by carbon intensity. Now to tackle the hub. We could take the same approach with the hub, but let's use the Find Similar tool to change the material right in the assembly mode. This tool first asks me what mechanical properties are critical for this part. I'll restrict the class to just plastics, because that's what I'd like to manufacture with. All I really care about is making sure the part doesn't get too heavy, so I'll specify materials with a similar density. SOLIDWORKS Sustainability will search the standard SOLIDWORKS database and any of your custom materials and suggest alternatives that match your mechanical requirements. As I click on each material, it'll show me what the impact of that part would be if it were made in that material. I'll find one that's much better for the environment, such as PPE, and that still has the mechanical properties I need. I'll accept the material and set it to the part. Now, if I've decided that PPE is a viable alternative to ABS plastic, why not change all the ABS parts to PPE? I can use assembly visualization to color the assembly on a variety of the parameters that affect sustainability such as material type. Then I can go ahead and multi-select all the ABS parts and change them all to PPE. As we go back to the sustainability dashboard, I can see that I've quite substantially reduced the impact of my toy with a few quick and simple decisions. What about altering an existing system? Now let's take a look at a level 2 redesign in SOLIDWORKS. Let's take a look at this standard 5-gallon bucket made of a plastic shell, a metal and plastic handle, and a cover. We could try some level 1 optimizations, such as thinning the walls of the bucket, giving it a thinner bottom or cover, or redesigning the handle. But instead, let's fundamentally rethink the bucket itself. Here we see a completely different way to store 5 gallons, a so-called bag-in-a-box package. This package is using a plastic liner sealed inside a cardboard box and with a spigot for dispensing. We can take a look at the environmental impacts, but we'd really like to compare these impacts to those of the bucket. In SOLIDWORKS Sustainability, we can import the baseline of a different model to use as this model's baseline. So let's dig into the results. The bag has a significantly smaller carbon footprint than the bucket and consumes less than half the energy over its full product life cycle. The impact to the air is slightly higher, but not significantly. The impact to the water, though, is a significant increase, about 50% higher. Well, we'll have to decide which indicators should guide our decision, but notice that the air and water impacts are mostly transportation. We can try similar redesign methods as last time. We can see here that the product is made in Asia, shipped by boat, and used in North America. But what if we tried making this product locally? Let's set it to be made in North America and trucked, which is most typical. Clearly, we're not doing much better this way. What if we send it by rail instead? We can still win on carbon and energy, and now the water impacts are much improved from before. On balance, I'm willing to accept that this is a better product for the environment. What about a level 3 redesign? Since that level of redesign involves the whole product system, this type of radical and disruptive redesign involves many companies and even industries. As we at SOLIDWORKS continue to infuse life cycle thinking into the design processes of many of our customers across all industries, we're working towards the day when all design will be sustainable design. Then, and only then, will such level 3 changes be possible. For more information and to see other screencasts in this series, please go to www.solidworks.com choose or contact your local SOLIDWORKS reseller. My name is Ashin Fansay. Thank you for watching.